Ladies and gentlemen, let's get into the video. Let's just discuss PlayStation 4's CPU and GPU profiling and optimization techniques. So I actually spotted this um, kind of by accident on Twitter, and uh, then I realized it had already been kind of popping up in the news anyway. Um, and this is actually from following Court Stratton once again on Twitter. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of background. Court is a member of the ICE team. Now, the ICE team are typically the ones who have a lot of the limelight when it comes to the PS4's optimization. I've also done this as an article as well because there are some images which I won't include in the video for copyright reasons and also because there are some links and stuff like that, so it just makes it easier to put it as an article. It's not critical or crucial that you check it out, but it would probably make your understanding a little bit easier. So Ice Team are generally like the rock stars on the PlayStation team. In other words, they are the ones that are responsible for working on a variety of different things, for example, improving the API, the drivers, and so on. Um, and it's not just them. When you actually drill down to it, and Core actually linked to a different um, division or company, if you will, known as SN Systems. They're also known sometimes as the Razor team. So these guys were actually acquired by Sony. Um, and they are responsible for developing various profiling tools. We'll go more into what they do in just a moment. And those tools are used to basically figure out where the resources are going for application, and what room there is to improve them. Can we compress the, for example, file sizes and so on. So um, there's also a brief link. There's a link to a brief interview as well from one of their members of staff in the article that I've created. His name is Tom Charlesworth. It's not massive information that he provides. He more says what his team does rather than specifics. But what we can find out is that basically his team first got involved in the PS4 side of things back in 2008. And indeed, they adapted the Vita tool chains, the existing tool chains, uh, adapted the Vita ones and used those for the PS4. And in fact, when Mark Cerny became involved in, through the development of the Vita tools, the PS4 tool chains, and eventually, um, in 2010, they started to migrate these Vita tools to the PS4. And so, at that point, they'd already been working on the Vita tool set for about two years, and then they were basically using those for the PS4. So, their Vita profile, profiler, I'm sorry, is known as Razer, and it's a joint CPU slash GPU uh, profiler, and it was something new. They've basically taken technology and moved it over to the PS4. Um, and so one of the problems, just in case you're not too familiar with the PlayStation 4, is it's built on a SOC. So that's a system on a chip, meaning the GPU, CPU, and a bunch of other little bit components are basically stuffed onto the same die. So they say, and I quote, one of the problems we faced with the PS4 is the hardware profile embedded within the SOC wasn't so attractive compared to what was available for the Vita. So we had to be a bit more creative in terms of solving the problems similar to those we experienced in the Vita where we had hardware assistance so we had to solve the problems in software but if they please results it's going to really help CPU engineers by letting them tune and speed up their code. So if you do check out the article you'll find a couple of images which show off examples of what they are referring to obviously they're not going to show off super 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 amounts of stuff because well I'm sure you can guess why, but pretty much uh, non-disclosure and stuff like that. But suffice to say, what one of their tools is, is a uh, application, the Razer tool set, which shows off its uh, the program's PC sampling. Now, PC means uh, program counter. So this basically counts the number of times a programmer or function executes. Um, and so in their screenshot, this dark green bar which shows the functions the PC was in when the sample was taken. So they've got a uh, couple, do work A and do work B. Obviously that example code for them just to try things out and you can see the number of times it's executed. So generally speaking, um, in programming, um, I'm not like the world's best programmer but I do know bits and 
generally speaking, what the common practice is for programming when you're trying to optimize is you want to go for the most common tasks first. And this is like a bug with the like an uncommon task. So let's say like one piece of code only executes very rarely, but it causes the application to randomly crash because it's a bit it's it's written in kind of like a haphazard way. Then you'd you know go back and fix it. But generally, you'll want to fix like the most frequently ran code uh, first, uh, whether it fits in the cache, whether it's uh, too big for that and has to fit in memory, whatever. Simply because it runs so often, you're going to get the most mileage in terms of man hours from improving that, rather than say a function that only runs every like 30 minutes or whatever. Okay, I exaggerate, but you get the idea. So with this, what they can do with the PC sampling is get an over an overview of what is actually in reality running so often and then they could say hey you know what that runs a lot and we notice that it's using a lot of resources let's fix that so another thing is that with the PS Vita development um, they had a development kit which actually allows them to have what's known as absolute timings now this basically means what's going on and graph out that information in a very simple way so you could basically find out okay um, in this example for example they've got a uh, call to patched function patch, patch function then saves the parameter for the register push the marker restores the parameter copies so in other words it, it shows what each of the functions is doing how much time each one's taking what amount of memory and so on and this is really 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 crucial stuff um, because you might not think this, but shaving off, say, 10 milliseconds here and 5 milliseconds there, when you consider that a frame, an actual, you know, frame is being generated in, for example, 16.6 .6 milliseconds or 33 milliseconds, you could start to see how just a small change can make a lot of difference, particularly when you're starting to deal with things that can really affect the performance of the game. Um, now, there's another example would be uh, memory. So, consoles have a couple of limitations. CPU and GPU resources being one in that you can't upgrade them and you can't upgrade memory either. Well, technically you can upgrade memory with some consoles. Uh, the Sega Saturn you could put in like a 4 megabit RAM cart, for example. Or, you could open up the original Xbox, assuming it's modded, and basically put in more memory you can basically put in i think it's up to 128 megs i've not done it personally never had a reason to but i think you can put up to 128 megs in an original xbox rather than the 64 but regardless that's kind of getting beside the point um so generally speaking the amount of memory you've got is whatever's going to be there for the rest of its life so in the case of like the ps4 you can't open it up and say put in an additional let's say, 8 gigs of RAM. And so because of that, you have to make the most of whatever's there. That means you have to optimize the code. So it does this in a couple of ways. There's a dead stripping. Now, dead stripping does sound a little bit dodgy, but it's nothing to do with the USS Ishimura from Dead Space. Instead, it basically means removing dead and unreferenced sections of code. So let's say, for example, you're coding an application and... Obviously, there is a group. It's not generally speaking one person who's doing this, but let's say they're creating a title and they say halfway through, hey, you know what, let's develop a, oh, I don't know, like a bit of AI for this enemy. This is just complete random off the cuff crappy example. And so let's say that, let's just call them, um, let's just call the enemy, ooh, I've got a great idea. Let's say the enemy is Fanboy. So they create this enemy by the name of Fanboy. And, you know, everything's going great. They put the enemy in. And then they say, hey, you know what? It's actually not fun playing against this Fanboy enemy. It's really, really, really freaking annoying. And so they basically just delete all references to it in the, you know, basically remove the models. They don't put them in. They don't populate them in the levels, that type of thing. And so there's no reason to call this AI for this fanboy. You know, it's a very limited amount of AI, of course, but still. So what happens? Well, it's basically just going begging. In other words, that code, because it's not being referenced, because it's not being told to execute and run, 
it's not doing anything. The code is basically not being called by any other function. It's not being called by the main function, for example, in C++. Therefore, it's basically useless. So what happens? Nothing, unless it's removed. So it's better just to remove it from memory. And this helps by, well, quite simply, per reducing the size of it, the size of the application. And it's also what's known as link um, or also known as a deduplication. So this was even easier to understand. It's basically, it just looks for the code, and if it finds that it can substitute a piece of code, um, let's just make a really crappy example once again. Let's just say you're declaring a variable, and let's say that variable is known as, let's just say, cookie. And let's say cookie is 5 plus 5. And then you make another reference uh, later on. And let's just say it's cookie 1 and that's also 5 plus 5. It will look and then if it says, hey, you know what, then just substitute. This is exactly the same thing. This application will basically go in and sort it out for you so you don't need multiple references to the same functions. It basically just links it all for you and basically tidies the code up. I'm very much simplifying that, but... I don't want to be going too program here for you guys. Um, and so what happens is by the time that all of this is done, once the dead code stripping, the data stripping, the deduplication, all of this crap is ran, you can go from, for example, 29.7, this is with a middleware demo, all the way down to like 24.5, which is a saving of about 17.5%, which isn't trivial. And on the other hand, a PS4 game can go from 82.5 to uh, 74.9, so that's a saving of about 9.2%. Uh, yeah, Once again, this has multiple reasons to improve things because it's going to take less size on disk. If you're doing a digital download, that's always a good thing as well. It means that you're going to be taking less memory bandwidth if it's going through like CPU and memory because, well, you're not getting these rubbish pieces of the code that just aren't being used or don't need to be having multiple references and so on. So I think that's just about all that I needed to cover for this particular video. Uh, once again, I've put a, provided all of the links and stuff in the original article. So you can go ahead and check those out if you so desire. Anyway, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Hopefully you've enjoyed the brief whirlwind tour. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.